If you're a local business owner and are trying to drive more customers through your door, the best way to do this is to be found on Google Maps by searchers who are looking for a product or a service that you sell. With millions of daily users, ranking on Google Maps could literally transform your business overnight. But ranking on Google Maps is actually quite easy. The real question you've got to ask yourself is, how do I rank high on Google Maps, which is where you're gonna generate more visitors and ultimately more customers. And this is what we're gonna look at today. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming it's likely to be your first time on this channel. So just a quick introduction. My name is Luke Durand, the founder of rankingacademy.co.uk. On this channel, I talk about the best tips, tools, tricks to help you be found on Google local search results and Google Maps. So for the new visitors, please subscribe and press the bell button so you don't miss any of my new videos. Enough said, let's start with the very first thing you need to do if you want to rank on Google Maps and jump on the computer. The very first thing you need to do if you want to add and rank your business on Google Maps is to create a Google Map business listing like this West London Dental Center. The reason behind this is because this is what Google uses in the results of Google Maps when someone is searching for a service or a product locally. Let me show you, if I go to Google Maps and search for dentist near me, you can see that the results on the left hand side are all made out of Google My Business listing and this is the example for our West London Dental Center. Creating a Google My Business listing is super simple. All you need to do is go to google.com slash business and sign in with a Gmail account which you want to be associated with your listing. If you haven't got a Google account yet, please create one. Enter the name of your business in the first field and click on add your business to Google. There are a couple of things that you need to remember. The first one is the business category you will be choosing will have a major influence on where you rank on Google Maps, so choose very carefully. The other thing you must take into consideration when creating your Google Map business listing is to make sure that you fill in all the possible details you can as part of the process. And if you check the actual help documentation from Google, they're pretty clear about this. As it says, to maximize how often users find your business in local search results, ensure that your business information in Google My Business is accurate, complete, and engaging. If you're not sure on how to do this, I suggest you watch my video, Google My Business Listing Setup, step by step. That should help a great deal. Once you've created and verified your listing, you're gonna be happy, right? And then you're gonna rank. Mm, yes, you will rank, but don't hold your breath. You will not rank number one in Google Maps, despite having filled in all the details on your profile. It takes a little bit more than that. You will be the new kid on the block and you will be facing tough competition, which has likely been established for some time. What you'll need to do is continue working on your listing so it climbs up to the top of the ranks whenever someone is searching for something that you provide. Ideally, what you want to do is hit the top three spots for the keywords that people are searching for, which are relevant to your business. There are two reasons why you want to hit the top three spot. The first one is the obvious one. This is where most people will click on a business listing. The second one is the top three businesses that sit right at the top of Google Maps are also included in what is known as the Google three pack, which is a list of three businesses that show up in Google search results when someone is doing a local search, which is gonna drive tons of traffic to your business and new customers. And this is where you want to be. For your listing to show up in the chosen ones, i.e. the top three, there are three areas that Google recommends you focus on. Let's have a look at them. We're back in the Google My Business help documentation, which explains how you can improve your local ranking on Google. And Google tells you there are three areas that determines local ranking. And the first one is relevance. And what does that mean? Well, Google says relevance refers to how well a local business profile matches what someone is searching for. Add complete and detailed business information to help Google better understand your business and match your profile to relevant searches. And this is what I was talking to you about earlier on in the video. When you first create your Google My Business listing, make sure you fill in all the possible details as part of the process. But this is not just a one-off job. You've got to continue feeding your Google My Business listing with more information, such as images and anything else that you think will be relevant. Let me show you what I'm talking about using the example of a Google My Business listing for one of my clients, an electrician based in London. 
As you can see, this listing contains a lot of information, which makes it stretch quite far down the results page, which is an added bonus. But let's go through the various elements that have been added over time, starting with images. You must consider adding images regularly to your listing. It will be helpful to Google, but also to your users. You will need to collect reviews. I will cover reviews in a couple of minutes. Uh, other details you must consider is add some health and safety attributes, which are available in your Google My Business uh, listing panel. Detail the product or the services that you offer. Add some FAQ to your listing. You can do that yourself. Make sure you have a description for your business. And you can also add posts, which will help create more content and give Google more context about what your business is about. There are plenty of other things you can do, but I think I've covered the majority of it and that will help you build relevance for your listing. Let's now have a look at the second key factor Google looks at to determine the ranking of a listing on Google Maps. The second factor Google looks at to determine local rankings is distance. And this is what they say. Distance considers how far each potential search result is from the location term used in a search. If a user doesn't specify a location in their search, we'll calculate distance based on what we do know about their location. So what does that mean? Let me explain. Whenever someone is searching for a local business and specifying the location in which they're searching for, Google will return a result based on that very location. Let me demonstrate. If I go on Google Maps and search for lawyer in New York, for example, you can see that the results will be based on New York and all the listings here are lawyers based in New York. Now, if I look for a lawyer near me, Google will base their results on my physical location, which is in London. You might wonder how Google is able to figure out what your location is. Well, check this out. Go into Google and do any kind of search. So I'm going to look for Nike shoes, for example, but it doesn't matter what it is. Then scroll all the way down to the footer of the page where you will be able to find a postcode and a city, which is the postcode and city where I live in. And Google is able to identify my location based on the IP address of my computer, but it can also track the exact location of anyone searching on Google Maps on their mobile phone based on the GPS information these are sending nowadays. That's clever, right? So how does this affect your Google My Business listing? Well, clearly location is very, very important. And to manage your expectation, you've got to understand that the nearer you are to someone who's searching for a service or product you provide, the more likely you will be able to rank at the top. And the further away a searcher is making the very same search, the less likely you will be able to rank. Let me illustrate this concept concept with an example of a tracking tool that I use to see the performance of my clients on Google Maps. So here is a tool called Local Search Grid from brightlocal.com, which is something I use to track the performance of the Google listings of my client on Google Maps. And this is the example for the electrician I mentioned earlier on for the keyword 24 hour electrician near me. And the business is actually located right there. What this tracking tool tells me is anyone searching for the term 24 hour electrician near me next to my client's business location will find him ranking number one in Google Maps. But if anyone is searching for the same term a little further out, you can see that the listings will drop in the rankings, which makes a lot of sense because there's likely to be a lot more competition there with many other electricians nearby. So what can you do as a local business owner to rank higher on Google Maps considering distance plays such a massive part in where your listing will be displayed depending on where a search is made? Well, there are several things you can take into consideration. The very first one, manage your own expectations. There is no way you will be ranking for all the terms that you're targeting across the whole map of the city where you're located, unless it's a very, very tiny city. And even then, it will be difficult. The second thing is, for those of you who live in a tiny city next to a bigger city, where the demand is likely to be way higher, you might want to relocate. So your business is located where there is a higher demand. I know this sounds drastic, but some businesses have done the move and it's had many benefits. The third thing you might want to consider is as your business expands, you might be able to open another office or another shop in another part of town, which will give you additional coverage across Google Maps. The last thing that you can do is work on the third key factor that influences 
your Google rankings. And this is what we're going to look at right now. So the third factor Google uses to determine local rankings is called prominence. There's quite a lot to read there. So I'm not going to read it all at once and I'm going to break it down. And it starts with prominence refers to how well known a business is. Some places are more prominent in the offline world and search results try to reflect this in local ranking. For example, famous museums, landmark hotels, or well-known shop brands are also likely to be prominent in local search results. And that's what Google does. They're trying to match the offline world with the online world. And it makes perfect sense. Can you imagine if they were to make a local corner shop more prominent than the local Walmart? It wouldn't be very natural. But it doesn't mean that you can't work on the prominence of your local business, even if it's not like a recognized brand. And this is how you do it. So Google goes on by saying prominence is also based on information that they have about a business from across the web, like links, articles, and directories. So let's stop here for a minute and talk about these various pieces of information one by one, starting with links. What Google means by links here are links you can find on other websites pointing back to your very own business website. That's as long as you have a website. And that means it's important for you to consider building one if you don't have one, if you're serious about building prominence in local rankings. But getting other websites to link back to your own site is generally quite difficult to achieve, especially if you're a new starter. There are, however, a few links that you can get to kickstart your effort. Let me show you a couple of examples. So here is an example for one of my clients, an emergency electrician in London who have all already mentioned at the beginning of this video. And these guys are part of an approved contractor scheme called the NICEIC. And the NICEIC have got their own website on which you can be listed just like this which is an easy link to have. Here is another example for another client of mine, a carpet cleaner located in London, who has actually qualified with the NCCA, which is the National Carpet Cleaning Association, who also happened to have a website on which this client is able to get a link from. If you are unable to get this type of links for your own business, then consider contacting your local chamber of commerce where you will be able to get one, like in this example. There are plenty of other opportunities, but these ones are the easy ones. So make sure you start with this. Let's move on to the next item that is mentioned in the Google Help documentation to develop prominence. And this one is articles and directories. Creating a Google My Business listing and a website is actually quite easy and Google will need further information to find out how prominent you are within your own sphere. And for that, it will also use other sources to verify how legitimate your business is, such as online directories. Remember the old phone books? These are the equivalent, but online. Let me show you a few examples. Here is Yelp.com. You can also list your business on Yelp.com, places like Nextdoor, Foursquare, or Facebook. There are tons of directories out there, but make sure you list your business in the most popular ones. To find out which ones these are, just go on to Google and search for top local directories where I can list my business. And I'm pretty sure you will find a range of websites where you can find lists of where to register your business. Time to move on to the next item to develop prominence. Google reviews. And this is what Google says. Google review count and review score factor into local search ranking. More reviews and positive ratings can improve your business's local ranking. So this is pretty clear. What Google is saying here is the more positive reviews you get, the more likely you will rank high on Google Maps. What it doesn't say here, however, is it has diminishing returns. So if you're starting out, by all means, go out there and start collecting reviews from your customers and you will see a significant difference in your rankings. But don't expect to keep on climbing as you're getting more reviews. Eventually, it will plateau a little bit. But make this a priority as it will also help with your reputation overall and with customers trusting you more. Time to move on to the last item that will help you develop prominence. And this one is your position in web results, for which Google says your position in web results is also a factor. So search engine optimization best practices apply. This sounds a bit vague if you're not familiar with search engine optimization. Essentially, what it says here is the position of your website in what I would say traditional search results will also have an influence on the overall visibility 
of your Google Map Business listing across Google Maps. Let me show you what I mean with, once again, the example of my electrician client. So if I search in Google for the term emergency electrician London, you can see that if I scroll down, he is actually number one in what I call traditional Google search results. This will impact this Google My Business listing ranking within Google Maps itself because there is a very strong correlation between your website and your Google My Business listing rankings. And that's what Google means by search engine optimization best practice apply, which is make sure you optimize your website so it ranks high enough. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know if it's your first time, there's quite a lot to take in, but trust me, you'll get there eventually. If you did like the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If it was your first time here today, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, happy marketing. Thank you.